All right, we'll call this meeting to order. This is the Legislative Committee of Kansas City, Missouri's uh, City Council uh, meeting on Wednesday, December 5, 2012. All the members of the uh, committee are present with the exception of Councilwoman Markison, who we understand won't be here. We have a limited docket today, um, and we want to thank, first, first of all, uh, our uh, lobbyists, uh, on the federal level for attending and for Julius for coming in once again. You were here last week. Last Wednesday. Yeah, and so you, we had better weather than you, so you decided to come back. Is that right? <laughs> Got it. All right. You guys have a um, report on the current status of things and what's happened over the recent past. So I'll leave it to you to get started and to uh, address the committee in whatever way you think is most efficient and effective. Okay, I'll begin, Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Pete. Now, by the way, it's Pete Levy, Julius, and Mary Jane Judy are here. You just took away the first part of my speech. Sorry. <laughs> now, please do it again and okay. do it better than I did. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the Council and this committee for giving us the opportunity to meet with you today and talk a little bit about uh, federal legislation and what we think we know about going on in uh, Washington, D.C. I'm joined, as the Mayor said, by Julius Hobson, who is a senior policy advisor in our Washington office, and Mary Jane Judy, uh, who is an associate at Postnelli Shugart. And the three of us have been the basic core of uh, the team that has worked uh, with the city uh, over the course of the last 12 months. And we are backed up on many occasions by two former members of Congress who are part of the Postnelli team in Washington, D.C., uh, Congressman Kenny Holsoff, who many of you I know are familiar with, and former Congressman Martin Frost, who is from the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, who is in Congress for 26 years, and uh, that has uh, served as kind of the core of our team in working with and uh, for the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Most of our work is done with uh, the mayor's office, with the chief of staff, John McGurk, and uh, with Sammy Panettiere, and who is uh, your uh, senior uh, lobbyist in both Jefferson City and Washington, D.C., and that, is, that has been a pleasure to work with both of them as well. During the course of the year, we've had 17 regularly scheduled conference calls with both of them, and various members of the city staff, including Kamiko, uh, from the manager's staff, who's been, uh, who've been on those calls to talk about what's going on in Washington at any given week. Uh, we have produced uh, 17 of those, these bi-weekly reports. Bi-weekly and 17 don't exactly go together over a course of 52 weeks, but they have been, generally speaking, bi-weekly reports, and I, I hope you have found them useful. Our, our goal has been to let you know about what's going on in Washington and of any potential grant opportunities that uh, Sammy and Kamiko could then pass on to other members of the staff here in the city. Uh, in addition, we've attended a number of meetings here in Washington and uh, in Washington, D.C. and here in Kansas City to talk about issues relating to transit. The mayor and the uh, county executive, we had everyone together uh, earlier this year to talk about Tiger grants and federal funding for uh, transit systems in, in the Kansas City area. We've met on issues relating to uh, the Marines being in Kansas City, on housing, on on the Bannister Project, the FAA moved to Kansas City, and a whole host of, of other things. And as uh, the mayor mentioned just last week, Julius was here again in Kansas City, and we hosted in our office a luncheon with the staff members of the entire congressional delegation. I think all of them uh, were with us at that event, and it gave us an opportunity to talk about city priorities and for the mayor to talk about his priorities uh, uh, as well. And uh, Calvin Williford, who is the chief of staff to Mike Sanders, was there, and the, and the two talked at great length about how the city and the county are working together on transportation issues for this community. Uh, but it was a good event. It's uh, something I think is very important to continue that discussion because those folks really play an important role in the success of this community in Washington, D.C., and they work, work hard and do a good job. What we'd like to do today is uh, to go over a couple of things that we have prepared for you that are your places. Uh, one is this summary of federal grants. Uh, uh, with the help of Kamiko, we have put together one document that outlines all the federal grants that the city has been receiving over the last <coughs> couple of years, and it's a pretty extensive list, as Mary Jane will tell you. The total is over about $100 million a year. Uh, and then uh, Julius is going to spend a little time telling you how some or all of those are in danger, maybe too strong a word, but all of those are subject to what's going on in Washington right now in terms of sequestration and continuing resolutions and the battles over the budget and the debt that are taking place in Washington. And then we'd like to review with you uh, some of the issues uh, for uh, the next year, the next calendar year, 
uh, that we think are important. And there's a resolution that has been prepared that we've made some suggestions to as to what those issues might be going forward. So, Mayor, that's kind of our agenda this this afternoon. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mary Jane, who will talk to you a little bit about this booklet. Thank you, Pete. So the, um, the booklet that Pete was referring to is the, the bound copy. And um, there's three tabs, the first being a, a summary. And, and the, um, the very first paragraph does uh, summarize the federal grants received by the city of Kansas City for the fiscal year that ended um, April 30th, 2011, was a hundred million dollars. So it's a significant amount of money that the city receives from federal grants. Um, so just that's that's what we wanted to kind of be in your head um, for when Julius talks about um, what's going on in DC with regards to sequestration and kind of what is at risk um, uh, for what's going to happen in the next few months. Then 2013 is a summary of um, issues that were presented by various department heads to this committee um, over the course of the last couple of months, which was um, turned into the, the draft resolution. Uh, today we did a, a markup of the draft re resolution as well, and you should have that in front of you, incorporating some um, additional issues that over the course of the year we found to be um, also priorities for the city. And then lastly, um, the, the bulk of the packet is the summary of 2011 and 2012 grants that were received, and you can see they're grouped by um, federal departments. So, you know, agriculture, commerce, um, energy, homeland security. So um, I'm not going to go through every, every grant, but um, to the extent you flip through some of those and they sound familiar, you can see the dollar amounts um, that these are all funds that have been received in the last two years. So... That I'll turn it to Julius. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and uh, thanks for for having me. Um, I want to talk about the first the, the atmosphere uh, has has obviously changed within the last month with the president's reelection, uh, with Democrats gaining seats in the Senate and actually gaining seats in the House. It gives the president a little more leverage than occurred uh, during uh, the, the negotiations that led to. Uh, creation of an enactment of the Budget Control Act of 2011. Uh, and that's sort of the governing thing for us right now. Uh, that act uh, uh, provided for an increase in the debt limit. It also, uh, which seems to get lost in a lot of, in the fog of the debate, reduced spending by $917 billion over, over 10 years. Uh, what it required was a creation of a joint select committee on deficit reduction it was supposed to uh, reach a goal of $1.5 trillion in, in uh, deficit reduction by uh, last December. It failed to do that. The, uh, the fail-safe in the law, if you, if you please, is a uh, mandatory $1.2 trillion sequestration. $500 billion comes out of defense, $500 billion out of non-defense, meaning domestic. Uh, $200 billion is assumed in savings in interest payments on the debt, and this is all over a 10-year period. Uh, the sequestration, therefore, amounts to a $50 uh, billion a year cut across the board uh, in, in, uh, in, in those programs that are, uh, that are not exempt. Sequestration is a procedure that was enacted in 1985 uh, as a part of a then debt limit bill, and what it means is it's an across-the-board cut by program activity and project, uh, which means that uh, departments and agencies can't set priorities Everything gets whacked unless it is exempt or unless it's uh, subject to special provisions. For example, uh, Medicare providers are cut by 2% uh, across the board. Uh, I'm sorry, I said $50 billion. It's $55 billion. So we're looking at a sequestration order that goes into effect January the 2nd. The Office of Management and Budget, based on a law the Congress uh, passed before the August recess, issued a preliminary report in which it it uh, uh, concluded that we're looking at roughly 8.2 percent across the board cut in domestic programs, the 2 percent cut across the board for Medicare providers I talked about, 9.4 percent cut in, uh, in defense. Now, there is one e exception in defense. The president is authorized to exempt military personnel. He has chosen to do that. Uh, that means that everything else gets hit that much harder uh, in, in the process. So here we are after the election. Uh, and uh, we're going to, uh, through a lame duck session of Congress, and uh, we've tended to call this an, a legislative Armageddon. 
Uh, we're looking at the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, the 2% payroll tax cut, that's the Social Security provision, uh, the estate, estate tax, the alternative uh, minimum tax. The uh, current debt limit is, is projected to expire uh, sometime in February or March. That has to, be, has to be dealt with. So those are the big pieces that we're looking at, plus uh, uh, physicians are looking at a 27% plus reduction in Medicare reimbursement because of a formula enacted in 1997, along with some Medicare extenders and uh, as well as therapy caps. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, the president has, has, in the first round of what you might call negotiation by, via media, uh, has submitted his proposal. Uh, stage one would be uh, new taxes. Uh, his, he has a $1.6 trillion proposal, additional taxes of $600 billion, uh, immediate increase in both marginal rates as well as capital gains and dividends, uh, approaching $960 billion. Uh, the 2009 uh, level of state tax, the alternative minimum tax uh, was a, is a minus $236 uh, billion. He'd also like to extend the payroll tax. Uh, he'd also like to extend the unemployment compensation. Uh, we've had uh, unemployment compensation sort of extended over a period of time, several times because of the high unemployment. That also expires uh, at the end of this month. He's also pr uh, proposed $50 billion in stimulus spending, uh, uh, primarily in infrastructure spending, which is something that would be very important for the city, uh, refinancing uh, for, uh, for mortgages for those people who are in, are in difficulty, and he would defer the, uh, the sequester uh, and also take care of the doc, the doc fix issues. He would accept about $400 billion in entitlement cuts, primarily in, uh, in, in Medicare. Uh, Speaker John Boehner uh, uh, responded in kind a couple of days ago. Uh, as you know, Republicans do not want to see an increase in the marginal tax rates. Uh, they want to do the uh, $800 billion in what's, in what's you know, called uh, uh, tax reform, uh, closing loopholes. I will simply say in one instance, uh, uh, since this is what I've done most of the 40 years I've been in this business, in the, it's on the financial end. You can't get there on closing loopholes. Uh, so there has to be something, but that's what he's proposed. Health savings of $600 billion, That's out of Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, other mandatory savings of $300 billion, uh, and that's to cut federal employee compensation, as, as well as the uh, supplemental nutritional assistance program, that's food stamps. And a revision in the consumer price index is something that's called chain weighted CPI, which would change the percentage of increase for Social Security. Uh, all of this would have, if they are unable to reach an, a, a deal uh, January 1, all of these things hit. It's called and described in the press as a financial cliff. In reality, it's not a cliff. Uh, you know, when we wake up on the morning of January 2nd, the world's not going to come to an end. It's more like we're going to die a slow, painful death. Uh, and it's a long slide, uh, and that's, that's the problem. Uh, all of this can be fixed retroactively, so if we trip into it and nothing happens, we have the possibility of that. But the Congressional Budget Office projects, if they do nothing, uh, that the city will slide back into a recession, that we'll look, be looking at uh, a 9.1 percent unemployment. One of the reasons why the, the uh, book that we've given you on federal grants is so important is that you can expect to lose between 9 and $10 million of those federal grants, uh, and that, uh, that's also a problem. The reason why I say that, because that doesn't actually work out to the percentage, but the sequestration that takes effect January 2nd is for the entire fiscal year, but the federal government will already be three months into the fiscal year, which means the dollar amount will be greater. The last piece is, is that the government is operating under a continuing resolution that's funding all of the discretionary programs through uh, March 27, 2013. Uh, there was an, uh, an attempt, and, and this, is, uh, this is actually new within the last 24 hours, the appropriators in the House and Senate were going to try to move some of the appropriations bills. One of the bills they were going to move, try to move was transportation. Under the continuing resolution, OMB issued a guidance in September that said that if the House bill or the Senate bill did not fund a particular program, then a department or agency could not spend money on that program. Well, the House zeroed TIGER. So that meant no spending for TIGER. So when they said they were going to try to move an appropriations bill, I said, good. 
you know, we had a shot. Well, yesterday, uh, the appropriators essentially have given up. The leadership has said no, because they're in the middle of these negotiations on, on the cliff issues, which means that essentially there won't be any Tiger funds available, at least until Congress uh, takes up another CR uh, in, at the end of March, or unless, as a part of the deal, uh, they provide uh, funding for uh, programs. Uh, these things that can hit uh, will mean a lot to Kansas City. You have 35,000 federal employees here. Uh, you, what you will see is layoffs, things like standing in line longer for, uh, for TSA at the airport, if you're not already standing in line a long time, uh, FBI agents, you name it, it gets, it gets cut unless it's exempt. Medicaid and children's health insurance programs are two programs that are exempt from, uh, from, from sequestration. So the outlook is this. They'll either do a down payment on a grand deal or they'll do a grand deal. I think a grand deal is out simply because we're running out of time to be able to do that or we fall over the cliff. Uh, and, and that um, will impact uh, uh, all of the priorities as outlined by the mayor in our lunch last week which certainly for you is in education, law enforcement, infrastructure, and transportation. And I'll stop there. Well, I feel better now. Well, <laughs> these are the, I, I do this all the time, and I prefer to do these either by video conference or phone, because yeah, that so way no one wants to hurt me before I leave. <laughs> Who has questions? John? No? And I might add, to save myself, sometimes I show pictures of my grandchildren, and <laughs> while people have pity, I run for it. Well, okay. I Council, just, uh, go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Carls. Go ahead. Okay, and then, I just I just had a quick uh, one. Uh, um, when you mentioned the continuing resolution, how long can that go on? Is is there a limit to how long? Because that's that's just continuing it till they really do it, right? Um, in my experience, uh, I have dealt with continuing resolutions that have been as long as twelve months, included at that time. All 13 appropriations bills in 1988 when I did when I ran congressional affairs for the District of Columbia government, mm -hmm. or as short as two days. Oh, so so they'll so probably they do can, something. Yeah, all, maybe you know the next what first they can year. do, what is likely to happen, and this is what worries me, is they can simply get to March and enact a one-page bill that amends the current continuing resolution strikes the date March 27, 2013, and inserts in September 30, 2013, and move forward. At on. that point, though, that would not prevent OMB from issuing a new guide, guidance that might allow for spending for TIGER uh, or other programs that were not funded in both bills. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we would, we would, you know, we're sort of like we would be in a hope and a prayer situation there. And, and do we have, in Missouri, don't we have one of the lowest Medicaid reimbursement uh, programs. As far as I know, that is the case. I, it was Not like the that. lowest. Yeah. One of the one lowest. One of the other. One of the lowest. Okay. All right. Thank you. John. And you're not, ex you're not uh, That's exempt. slated. Yeah. It is uh, exempt. Yeah, Medicaid is exempt, uh, but the question for you is under the uh, Affordable Care Act whether or not the mm -hmm. governor makes a decision to expand Medicaid uh, and the federal government would pick up the tab for that two years. That would uh, pick up some of it, um, but you know, remains to be seen. Okay, thanks. Oh, I'm done. Uh, Councilman Sharp, thank you. Well, the governor did recently announce he wants to see that expansion, but that was uh, met with less than uh, unanimous yes. cheering uh, <laughs> uh, in the General Assembly. If you had to bet, would you bet that uh, they will, uh, the Congress and the administration will reach a, a deal to avoid sequestration? Oh, they will reach a deal to avoid sequestration. I just can't tell you when. Uh, the good news is is that they actually exchanged proposals, even though each side poo-pooed the other. Uh, we needed that to happen. That's a good start. Uh, it's, a, it's sort of like a, a, a school dance where the dancing partners started to dance at the, it, both sides leaning on the wall, and you got to bring them together till they touch. Yeah something that young people don't do these days in dancing, but that's what it means. And it's sort of, we can get them we, we, when we get to that. If we are still in the posture a week from now that we are in right now, that's a problem. Uh, the, the House Majority Leader actually <coughs> announced on the floor today that if there's no deal by Christmas, then expect uh, Congress to be in between Christmas and New Year's. 
Anything else? Thank you. Uh, Dick or uh, Councilman Davis, I'm sorry. Dick is fine. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I uh, was looking over the report that was submitted, and between pages 6 and 22, they list the, uh, the grants that the city is receiving, uh, just uh, numerous grants on every page. Um, we talk about $100 million being the grant amount that we received in the year, but... Uh, it's interesting. It's just not a uh, uh, a one point in time grant. It's just dozens and dozens of grant grants that uh, that we actually received. Do you know how many there are grants that we receive money from that are listed in these uh, I don't sixteen pages? No, um, I can count them. And some some that were received. You know, if there, some were received in 2011 that maybe were one year deals that weren't necessarily in 2012, and you can tell by the columns. But I don't I don't have a total number of number of grants, just the total um, dollar amount received when they're all compiled together. I hadn't received. I don't remember a summary like that last year. Have we been doing this in the past where we had all the grants in one place? I don't think so. This is um, this is something that um, we worked with Kamiko on that she sent us that was. Um, a result of uh, of an audit that was done, and this is a compilation of that information. So, yeah, I commend the staff and the team for putting question? it together. No, Councilman, we have not had something this comprehensive in the last three or four years. I, I think it's an excellent data source, and I commend you and the team for putting it together. Anybody else? A couple of questions. One, I think, and I was looking for it here, is MAP 21 part of the proposals for support? Uh, there is, I don't know, I'm not sure which version Kamiko passed out. I'm not sure but either. But there's one that's been redlined to which MAP 21 was added at the, yeah, at the it, back. It, it's in blue next to the last page. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure that I have that. Uh, but let me ask Did this you, question. Have, and there's also a memo at your page, Mayor, just about MAP 21 and the different programs that the city ought uh, okay, to I see the keep map. their eye I on. I got it. Thank okay. you. Okay, let me ask this question. Why, why would we support MAP-21? <coughs> MAP-21, from my perspective, is, works against the interests of this city because under MAP-21, unless you have a $500 million project bare minimum, you don't even qualify to receive funds. So it would be great for the Missouri Department of Transportation, but it sucks for Kansas City, Missouri. Well, Julius can help me on this. There, the, MAP-21 covers... FHWA, the Highway Department programs, and it also covers programs that are administered by the Federal Transit Administration. The $500 million cap applies to the ones that are administered by FHWA. If you look through this memo about programs that are administered by FTA, a lot of those are by formula grants that come directly from the federal government to the ATA. They're grants for which cities are eligible to apply for particular programs, and they don't come through the through the, uh, the State Highway Department. It's only one, one portion of this. Bikes and trails are an example of a program that comes through the state that the city would have to apply for money because it's allocated to the state. But things like uh, bus and transit facilities, uh, urbanized area formula money, fixed guideway, capital improvements, these still remain programs for which the city or the ATA, whoever the operating agency might be, applied directly to the federal government to receive those grants if they're and if they're eligible to receive them based on the criteria they would be considered to do that okay. map 21 is the only vehicle that congress has put in place to do that funding and it's only a two-year authorization it expires at the end of fiscal year 2014 and it's it's very difficult to do any long-range planning with any of these programs that only have a two-year base right. the program was only authorized no money has been appropriated for map 21 right so the federal government has to go through this process. No, you sorry. have to do it. Cor correction. They, they, they've appropriated some, but they didn't appropriate up to the level of up the authorization. The okay. Okay. And that's the problem. So that's why we've said, we, we've said fully fund so that that's there right. would there would be uh, more yeah. money so there. So there's now more money to actually do some of the things that we would exactly. like to see them do. And All then right. you'll notice in the language right behind that, we inserted language about a, a new uh, reauthorization of the law for five years, because normally that's what you would get. Mm -hmm. And it's a five-year authorization that's the most important because it allows the, you know, it would allow the city to plan uh, over, a, over a longer period of time. And I know this has been a concern of yours, Mayor. There was a 
There was an article that appeared just last week quoting uh, Congressman Schuster, who is the new chairman of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. And it, I'm, this, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially what he said, it's kind of over my dead body, is this program going to go through the states? Okay. Thank you, Congressman <laughs> Schuster. I can find you. Well, he didn't say over my dead body, but it was he had a very strong commitment Thanks. not to run these programs You're, through the state. You, you have to also Congress. understand, that, that runs in the family. His father chaired the committee when he oh, was in the House, and uh, <laughs> several years ago uh, pushed through a highway reauthorization bill that was, I want to say, a hundred billion or more than what the Bush administration wanted <coughs> and what the House leadership wanted, and he ran over them. Oh, mm -hmm. Good for him. Uh, but given and, the priority of the city for transit funding, right. we put this memo together to advise you on issues as they come forward, as these programs begin yeah. to be funded, so you're in the right place to, uh, to advocate for them. Thank you. Now, one, one thing that I, I – and I've got so many versions of so many things in front of me. I'm not sure if it's here or not. If FAA mentioned in here, it, or is that one of our priorities? Because I think it's something that's certainly in play that we ought to be pursuing. Uh, I don't think – it wasn't in the version that was originally prepared, and it isn't in yeah. – we, this, that this can be added. The Marine Corps is in here, but not the Marine FAA. Corps. Certainly, absolutely. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, we've got to do. We've got to do everything we can to extend their five-year commitment beyond that. The, perhaps the good news is is that they won't have a whole lot of money right. uh, coming up in the near future, and that this may a potential move may take on less importance. I would suggest, however, that we at least uh, identify FAA and the pursuit of the FAA as a, as a priority on the federal level it's extremely important. And, uh, frankly, we were, if I'm not mistaken, I think we were leading the pack before the politics right. entered mm -hmm. into it, uh, and it was uh, maintained in Florida. Now it's back in play. But the politics have changed, too, because the federal government is making it more difficult to move facilities. Right. It's good for the Marines and it's bad for the FAA, right? R yeah, true enough. Uh, but there's two versions of what they're looking at right now. One is a version that they move into not specially constructed, but single-purpose facilities where they would be the sole and only tenant. And the other is to move in as an adjunct, perhaps at a community college that had the proper equipment and physical layout. Um, those are two things that we've been asked to not to consider as we decide which way we want to go and put in and make our play for FAA. So you're right; it may not happen, but. It may, and I think we ought to make it a priority somehow uh, to go after it because it's it's a huge economic development issue in the city. Well, Mr. Mayor, that's also uh, there's also one other upside to it. Uh, uh, what happened before was the FAA bill left the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. That language wasn't there. It went to the House Rules Committee, and when it came out of the House Rules, it was there. Uh, that person is no longer chairman of the committee. Uh, and so uh, in whose district the <laughs> current facility was adjacent to. Right. So that's there good. is an upside. Yeah. Well, that's good. It, you know, who knows if it will happen, but as long as it's in play, we ought to make our play a big one. Um, I don't have anything else. The information, I, I, first of all, thank you again. I, I had the opportunity to review this information when the aides for our congressional delegation were at, at the firm and we had lunch, which, again, I thank you very much for. I think that was a very worthwhile conversation we had uh, with our uh, representatives of our congressional representatives um, and, and opened the door, I think, for further conversations with their principals. So thank you very much for that. Secondly, thank you for the uh, compilation of uh, information regarding the uh, past and current um, grant structures and the recommendations on our federal priorities. Very much appreciated on all counts. Um, are you, uh, did you have something else, John? Before we Sure, go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I, I had some questions about some of the specific language in here. Go for it. And, uh, uh, now, which one are you looking at? I'm looking at the blue line. Copy. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. And um, this one here, it's got red on the front, like the, right here. Yeah. This one. 
Oh, right there, Dick. Yeah, there, there you go. Thank Councilman, you. I might just explain this. This was a, the, the one version was prepared by Kamiko and the city staff, and then we reviewed it, and that's where the blue oh, and the red lines no, are. I understand. Uh, th there are some little stylistic things in here that, that I'd like to be able to talk to staff about uh, that I think could improve the wording, but um, <clears throat> let me talk about some more substantive issues, if I could. On page two, on responsible management of the Missouri River, uh, we have got in there all the catalog of things that they're supposed to look at on managing the river. But uh, the question is what emphasis you put on which ones of those. And, of course, the, the uh, upstream states have uh, been, I think, more successful than those of us in the downstream states in the past on emphasizing recreation at the expense of navigation and flood control uh, here in, in Missouri. And we've seen the devastating, uh, consequences of that in flooding of some of our best farmland, uh, flooding of interstate highways uh, that I-29 was closed. I can't remember how long, but I've never seen an okay. interstate close that long. And uh, the uh, erratic uh, flows of, of water in the Missouri River have, have seriously damaged uh, river nav navigation and uh, made it difficult for us to reestablish Kansas City as, as a major port. So I, I would like to add at the end of this, uh, with emphasis on providing adequate flood control and adequate channels and water flows for navigation. Is that the language specifically with emphasis on? Yes, sir. Okay. On, on those two things, because I don't think we ought to be ashamed of, of uh, advocating for, for more emphasis on the things that, that we need here in Missouri. Uh, the upstream states certainly haven't been. What's Mr. Mayor, is, Mr. Uh, excuse sir, me. go ahead. I don't know if I'm on No, no, order, go ahead. You're but fine. I might suggest that you add water supply as one of those emphasis areas because it is indeed the Missouri River is a source of the water for right. Kansas City, Missouri and Kansas City, Kansas. We'd say providing adequate flood control, adequate water supply, and adequate channels and water flows for navigation. Uh, and that goes on responsible management. Yes, ma'am. Does anybody have any objection with that addition? Good change. Uh, I, I did have a question uh, along that line. Um, and it may just be because uh, it may just not be mentioned as an authorized purpose. But I, I guess I would go so far, and I think Councilman Sharp is right to point out uh, the, the port piece because that is, that is an important part uh, for Kansas City as we move forward. But, but can, you, can you actually mention economic development or job-related or something like that? Is that outside of what would normally be considered an authorized purpose? It is not listed as an authorized purpose to my knowledge, whereas these other things are. And, and, and I, I understand that, but I just wanted to ask the question. It, it, if we get the other things? <laughs> we get that too, sure. That no. comes as sure. an ad. No, I understand. Yeah. I understand. No, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, on the next page, on the second item, request EPA to reconsider its historic interpretation of uh, its authority on integrated planning outside the enforcement context, context. I didn't quite understand the way we had it worded, but right now they interpret that authority to, to not have that authority, right? They think they don't have that authority to uh, to allow integrated planning outside enforcement. Is that is that correct? Does anybody know? Okay. That's what came from the original language. I think it might be a little clearer to understand if we said instead of two limit, if we said that limits its authority, because it almost sounds like we want them to limit the authority in the. We want them to reconsider their position that, that is limiting it. And then on several other sections. I'm sorry, Councilman, can I, can I interject there? Sure. Having had not EPA experience, but experience with an agency when it says it doesn't have authority, uh, that the, uh, what you might want to do is push for a legislative remedy because in, in, in a previous experience, uh, we had an agency then go to the Justice Department and get a legal opinion from the Justice Department, which slammed the door. And then we had to go, we lost a lot of time and then had to go to the Hill to get language to fix it. Uh, so my suggestion is, is that you go to the legislative route. Uh, uh, if you request EPA, they may already have a legal opinion from Justice, or they may have their own internal legal opinion. But if you go the legislative route, uh, you're on safer ground and you'll save time. 
Well, if you can get it passed. If you can get it passed. But once they get a, 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 a legal opinion that says they can't do something, then they won't. Well, uh, that that's not my issue. Uh, I think I, we have to rely on you and staff to determine that. The, these weren't my issues. It was, I just couldn't understand the, the language. But uh, I think we do have a pretty good relationship with EPA. And This uh, is probably historic language over a number of years, Kamiko, I would yes, guess. Uh, yeah. And probably the Water Department was the one that produced it. Yeah, so that, I think the language was yeah. last year, too, yeah. or the current yeah. one. Yeah. If so this is last it. year's language, then clearly it didn't solve last year's problem. <laughs> um, so, John, what are, what, are, what are you trying to accomplish to make it clear or to actually make get more action? Well, I, I think you ask the agency first. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. That's just I just think you do that first. Uh, I, I don't think we'd have much luck getting this passed by Congress, especially if the agency opposes it. I well, think we'd be better off at least going to them and trying the collaborative approach first. It seems that to some extent, and please help me if I'm wrong, but it seems that to some extent we could find out the basis of their historic interpretation that they do not have this authority by asking them what is the basis for that interpretation. Yeah. They would have a legal opinion that says it or something. My guess is is that it's not somebody who's sitting around saying, ah, I don't think we can do that. Yeah. Uh, Bureaucratic uh, folks don't generally act like that, I don't think, especially when, um, well, they just don't. Um, so we could find out the basis of their historic interpretation, and then perhaps that would give us the best approach as to how to challenge that. But for purposes right now, we're just trying to clarify language. Is yes, that right? Sir. Yes, sir. You All might right. just want to change it, just to support reconsideration of the historic interpretation, which would give you the ability to do it by regulation or by well we could do that on on those two bullet points and that makes sense okay so support right support reconsideration okay who's uh keeping tracks of these changes for purposes of uh the next draft is that you okay uh, all right. and i'm not going to bother to take <laughs> yeah, notes right. and then let me I rely on councilman sharp for that <laughs> so let me add, let me ask kind of a global question that, that, that applies to several of these. We reference specific bill numbers, mm -hmm. like going down Water Protection and Reinvestment Act, mm -hmm. and then we say we should support the reintroduction of this legislation. If, the, if these are old bill numbers, shouldn't we just zap these bill numbers and, and just refer to these acts by their titles and say we support the reintroduction of this legislation? The answer to that is no. Uh, that's why we put the language in here. Uh, any legislation that's introduced uh, that, it, that does not become law at the end of a Congress dies. Uh, if you just used a name, uh, going back and researching, someone will ask you, well, the, the first question in Washington they'll ask you was, what was the bill number in that Congress? Original. So this allows you to go back uh, online into thomas.gov, type in this bill number for the 112th Congress, and see that bill language and say, this is the bill that we want introduced in the 113th. So that's why you keep the bill number in there for the current Congress, but accepting the fact that it will have to be reintroduced in the next Congress. So it's just for reference. It's just a reference. It's for sure. reference. Okay. Um, going on to the next page, violence prevention funding, uh, allocation by the federal government of 500000 to expand evidence-based behavior change models. How did we come up with that 500000 uh, I mean, that seems a little specific. It sure does. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Archer, do you want to speak to that since that's coming from your shop? Yes, and we got previously. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Dr. Rex Archer, Director of Health, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, that number, I mean, 500,000 is a round number, um, and it could be considerably more than that. Um, so, I mean, it, it just, I think that just kind of evolved from uh, ideas of what might be available uh, from past uh, discussions with uh, Congressman Cleaver's office in particular. Uh, I have another question about. Go ahead, John. I had another question about that same segment. Go ahead. Well, 
Uh, I just thought we were being too specific. I, I thought we ought to just say funding because leave the amount out. Yeah. I think not only should we perhaps not. Uh, I think perhaps we should not only deal with the amount, but I'm not sure that having the name of an exemplar uh, agency, uh, somebody does has a problem with aim for peace or something else, then that might color how they look at it. Yes. And since it's like behavior change models, we could end it there and leave out the such as because I don't think that having the such as helps. And it could hurt. Take that, that out. Yeah. So you want aim for peace taken out? I do. And I had one more question on, on biomedical on research. Hold on a second. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, we crossed out such as aim for peace program. Would we leave in to provide additional coverage in high crime areas and cross out of Kansas City? Because we're still talking about coverage for high crime areas. Uh, yeah. The, the, I'm, the, yeah. My only point was. I don't see a reason to mention a specific program. program when you're talking about such as is because to me then it, it, it causes other programs that might think that they should be the such as is to not want to support it. You know, it's kind of like I, such as uh, you, we should all drink soft drinks such as Sprite. Well, every Pepsi play, <laughs> drinker comes out of the woodwork at you. <laughs> I mean, I, I would concur that saying a specific name, I think the important part is that they're evidence-based, um, that they actually have accountability and have been evaluated because there are programs that claim to be out there that haven't been. I'm not, I'm not debating their effectiveness or non-effectiveness or any of that. I just think that there's, no, there's nothing to be gained by mentioning a specific program in this type of a document because as soon as this document becomes public, then every other program out there says, why did you mention them and not mention us? And we're answering that question for six months. It's, it's just not necessary. And I've got one other question on that page on biomedical research. That, that seems awfully general. Um, I don't know what we're getting at specifically here. I mean, it, Where are you? Um, She's on the same page. Section 5, oh, okay. under tax-exempt okay. municipal bonds, biomedical research. Um, it, it's so vague that I, I just wonder uh, how worthwhile it is to put it in there unless we can beef that up some. And this was something that was um, included by, by uh, Julius and Right. But you didn't have the specifics at the time to actually include anything. No, more, and it, it's it's I guess partially intentionally general. It involves the National Institute of Health. It involves the federal government restricting certain kind of, in previous administrations restricting certain kind of research. It's ultimately money that could be going to UMKC. It could be going to the dental school, the medical school. It could be going to universities. It's a priority of the city to uh, promote life sciences in the community. And that was the intent that, that I'm okay it. with it, but I think we just need to beef up the language a little more so we okay. kind of have some idea of what it means. Of, of what it means. And I had one other question on last page, Section 10, Workforce Investment Act, um, and, and you reference a bill number. Now, is this the bill number we support, or is this the bill number we we oppose? It's the current bill number. It's the current. Current Which legislation. Opposing the current Which would be opposed. Bill number, is that correct? Well, that's, that was my question. Oh, I see. Okay, okay we see. I see the the, those changes oh. were recommended in that piece of legislation that did not pass, right, Julius? Right. Yeah. So this is a bill we oppose. That part of the bill. This parts of these parts of the bills. So strike the last sentence. Yeah, strike the last sentence. So the city should not support yeah. the reintroduction right. of this right. legislation. Yeah. Strike the Unless this is the bill that also funds, like, the Full Employment Council. Uh-oh. Well, we might need to do a little more work on that. Up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this one. Didn't that come from one of the hearings? No, it was a... No. No? Okay. So, so do we know where it came... The origin of this? No, oh, I, it's I do letter. not. It's a conference of mayor's letter. Oh, it was a conference of mayor's letter. letter. Okay. Oh, that's Mr. where we May, found it. Do you remember that one? There was, that's right. There no. was a letter that came to you as a member of the Conference of Mayors urging your position on this Workforce Investment Act. Let us dig out the letter. Yeah. Yeah, but now I don't know how it twisted in there somewhere, um, whether at the end of the day they wanted certain provisions to be opposed but support the entire piece of legislation, which I kind of remember being that's the right. issue. That's right. That's right. 
you know, but there were some things they did not like. In the video. So, and it was more that there, I, I don't know, it was that there was traction being gained in the Senate right. to turn it into a state block grant, which was, the, as I recall, the basis of the, so it wasn't that the the bill was, necess- that the bill was bad, it was kind of the movement. It was the uh, administration of the funds that <laughs> right. flowed as a result of the bill. Right. And the U.S. Conference is always going to take a position that if it doesn't have to go to the state, it shouldn't. Yeah, right. So right. is that basically it? Yeah. Yeah. Kansas City is really... Fortunately, in a unique position because it has one of the best employment councils in the United States. And right. in many other states, the money comes, in many other parts of the country, the money comes to the states and gets divided. And they've had all kinds of many problems times. with the designation of those organizations. Yeah. But thanks to Clyde, that doesn't occur here. Um, you could have opposed the consolidation, yada, 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 state, but otherwise support the reintroduction of the legislation so that it's clear that you're not supporting that, but you are supporting the reintroduction of the legislation. Yeah. How does that work? I, I think that's what we're trying to get at. I just couldn't quite understand it the way it was gotcha. mm-hmm. Why don't we reverse it so we'll put supporting first and opposing the specific later? Um, lead the parent, the parent leads can the you guys play with some yeah. language yeah, on it? I was going to say you have a sentence that says what you support right after the sentence that says what you oppose. Right. So that yeah. may be all you need. Turn it around. Reverse order. Yeah. 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 Start with a positive. And there's really no controversy on the World War I Museum. Mr. Mayor, did you get your answers in Section 8, the MAP 21? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Because we're still supporting MAP 21? Yeah, we're I'm supporting fine. full funding of it. Full funding. I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. they explained it very adequately and straightened me out very well. <laughs> and based on your comments before, Mayor, we could add a Section 12 FAA training facility, support the relocation of the FFA training facility to Kansas City. Good. Yes. Where is it now? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. What else do we have for these folks? Nothing? Thank you very much. I understand. Are you testifying for business session tomorrow? Yes, that's Okay, correct. good. So everybody will be here to hear that, and then we can maybe get to the same points here and smooth this out. Thank you very much for coming in from D.C. Thank you for coming in from the plaza. <laughs> Pete and Mary yeah, Jane. Good ride. <laughs> nice trip. Thank you for I your time. I guess as you stop by, maybe stop on the boulevard, have some good food, something. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm looking for my agenda. There's only one other thing on the agenda, if I'm not mistaken. And that's to finalize the uh, resolution. Is that correct? Have we gone through the resolution with sufficient uh, thoroughness to be able to accept it with the um, changes that we've made, or do we need to talk about some other issues uh, related to it? Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, I think we've, we've talked about all the uh, general issues. There are a few little wording things in here I think we could smooth out a little bit uh, uh, like uh, th- that are inconsequential, but I, I think make it look a little more professional perhaps. Uh, and uh, I assume... Uh, uh, this could be introduced uh, uh, tomorrow to the council, but maybe instead of uh, voting on it uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, just introduce it and, and have it hold its place on the docket and not come back to committee because we already talked about it. But then that would give us another week for our colleagues to look at it if, if they had any concerns. Uh, that sounds reasonable to me. Anybody have any objection to that process? Anybody have uh, any objection to simply allowing the wordsmithing to go on so that we can have it prepared for tomorrow and then we can proceed in that way? Does anybody have any specifics about the proposed resolution that we haven't talked about that we should talk about before we get down to the to the final drafting issues? None? I, I think it was – I think it's a great uh, document. I really uh, – support the the emphasis on trying to get our fair share of funding for our levees and our flood control projects. I mean, mean, it's just ridiculous that some of these projects have stopped in mid-construction, like in the Dotson area where you've got this beautiful flood wall that just stops. So it is 
it is of no use whatsoever other than a decorative item. And, uh, no, not very decorative at that. Not particularly. <laughs> so uh, I mean, There's no flowers or anything. No, no. So, so I, I'm pleased that we're putting that emphasis uh, on getting our fair share of this funding because these levies protect not only a lot of our residents but a significant uh, amount of our industrial base. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Anybody else have anything that we need to bring up for the good of the order? Any other? Councilman Davis. I just wanted, Mr. Mayor, given the fact we spent the first few minutes talking about uh, sequestration, I'm not sure I can say Sequestration. It. Sequestration that, uh, that maybe we should be say, take, saying something about uh, doing everything we can to avoid sequestration and uh, encouraging a solution before the first of the year. Or, um, or is that just we might want to do another resolution and actually pass that tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the uh, National League of Cities asked everybody to, to get on that. I thought we signed something on that already, didn't we? Oh, or maybe I, maybe it was a U.S. conference. But I have no objection to that. I think it makes perfectly good sense. It's not binding, but it certainly does. Let them know what we're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Now, you do realize, of course, that that may be seen as a partisan act. <laughs> really? Of course. It won't be the first time, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Could I mention something else, Mr. Mayor? By all means. Is it partisan? Oh. I hope not. Um, I think I think it's it, I think that there are enough people on both sides of the Democrat or of the uh, of the political aisle who believe this is a bad idea that it couldn't it might not be. However, there are those who would say it is because it supports the position of the president to some extent, and that might not be uh, what they want. But I think that it's really a matter of self-defense. We have a lot to lose, potentially, by watching this unfold in the way it's unfolding. And I don't care whether we're Republican or Democrat. Our allegiance that we're trying to protect is to this city and to maintaining right. some consistent right. fiscal sanity so that That's we can right. move forward. That's right. Okay. So with that being said, I don't think it's a political act, but don't, that doesn't mean others won't say it is. Um, go ahead, Mr. Mr. I, I want to Mr. just mention one other thing uh, that, that I think is of interest to the Legislative Committee. Uh, a, as you know, Mr. Mayor, we had the freshman tour uh, of legislators come through, and, of course, the same time as, as your conference. And uh, it, was, it was great to have those two events in Kansas City. It would have been nice if they weren't at the same time. But... Uh, uh, in talking to some of the legislators uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, they were certainly uh, supportive and, and welcomed your comments uh, at the dinner Monday night. And then, of course, our colleague, uh, uh, Councilwoman Serco, spoke to the group uh, at Tuesday morning, and, and I spoke to them at lunch Tuesday and, and emphasized our desire to not only push our economic development agenda but also to, to get some action to try to crack down on on the theft and, and uh, uh, purchase of, of stolen copper and, and other items, uh, which I think was well received too. But uh, um, it, it was interesting because I'd been on the freshman tour exactly 40 years prior, which I really? hated. Yes, uh, which I hated to admit, <laughs> but I did. And then uh, Bill McKenna, the former uh, state senator, who is heading the uh, uh, transit group that's trying to get adequate funding. Uh, uh, for uh, to improve our r highways and bridges in Missouri, uh, got up and he was one of the main speakers and, and said uh, he thought he was one of the oldest people there and because he'd been on the tour 30 years ago until he heard John Sharp and now he he felt young again. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I thought it was an excellent uh, meeting and uh, uh, I, I was glad uh, that that we had a good turnout. A lot of our own delegation was there and I, I think. Uh, uh, they learned a lot more about our needs over here, and particularly the needs to be able to compete on a level playing field or more nearly level playing field with Kansas for jobs and businesses. Fantastic. I, I appreciate that, and I'm glad that you were able to, to address them. I'm sorry I wasn't able to stay long, but I was running back and forth between things at that particular point. Uh, but I think it's great that you and, and Councilwoman Serco we're able to talk to them because it reinforces the message. It also, I think, sets a tone of engagement that we really need to have. And while we're on it, I'll let you know that the Regional Count uh, Mayor's Caucus has uh, uh, is taking a much more 
uh, assertive position than it has. It held a while back, not a while back, uh, maybe a month ago, a um, or a little, yeah, it was maybe a month ago, um, a, a meeting at Liberty uh, out at William Jewell where the representatives were able to attend, but the senators were not because they were in caucus in St. Louis. The thing that flowed out of that was that the mayor should put together a list of priorities that they would then champion with the legislature. And, and the good news is, is that because of the work that this committee had done and the fact that we were already there with our list of priorities, I was able to present to them our list from which we have selected some things. They are not all in agreement with everything. So we took, we're taking those things that, um, that everybody uh, could agree to. And I think there's, there's, uh, yeah, uh, there's three items. There's uh, angel tax credits and uh, data centers. Uh, there is um, job retention and, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on a third, but then they, there was an added issue of at least doing some research on the tax issues brought up by Kansas's action and how Missouri should respond. That was kind of off a different way, but we thought we ought to have somebody looking at it. But the three things that were selected, that we've selected, came... I don't want to make it seem like we're the only ones who could have come up with them, but having our list there certainly helped facilitate that conversation. So we will find, I believe, regional mayors pushing the same items that we're pushing when we lobby down there. Now, the last part, thing I'll say on that is, is as you know, I think we have the legislative luncheon coming up or something. Yeah, uh, and, and the mayors, we're trying to arrange for the regional mayors to meet with the senators before or after so that those mayors can then tell the senators what those priorities are. So then we can get moving off of that and, and start moving. So there's going to be a much more concerted effort of lobbying um, uh, there, and we'll hopefully be able to see some fruits of that. But I think we have a good group now on, uh, on at least three issues all going in the same direction. Well, and next week uh, I'll be chairing a meeting in Jeff City for the Missouri Municipal League on uh, that uh, involves all the lobbyists for the for the league and and the various cities to make sure that we can uh, kind of coordinate our efforts. Carson, uh, Mayor Carson Ross has done this in the past, and uh, I think he felt he served his time on it. So I'd been asked to do it, and Good. and hopefully, since our priorities are so similar, uh, we'll be able to get additional allies. Um, we'll be having a, a joint meeting. Uh, in South Kansas City with the South Kansas City Chamber and Grandview Chamber to talk about uh, having a, a legislative breakfast that we'll talk to our legislators about. We uh, recently had several uh, uh, state representatives, I think we had three or four and two state senators speak to the South Kansas City Alliance and we stress several of our priorities, not our whole list, but we stress the uh, need to crack down on, on the copper theft. Uh, the need to support the extension of the land assemblage tax credits. So we did cover several of the things that are on our agenda. I remembered the other one that was Mosaro. Yes, go oh, okay. okay. Do we have, yes, I, council. I have just a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Um, tomorrow, the resolution on the federal priorities, you want that on the docket? Yes. You want a motion to be prepared to hold it one week? Uh, Yes. Hold, just hold it on the docket. Yeah. yeah, just hold it on the docket. Okay. Um, and the legislative committee, you all, everyone's sponsoring it? Yes. Oh, right. yes. Okay. Then a second resolution for immediate adoption on the sequ sequestration. 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 Bill. Yes. Well, when you're saying it, I was like, well, I could say it. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. And there's all a right. lot of information okay. on that from the National League of Cities, yeah. U.S. Just Conference say, is of Mayors. Is there an NLC so. suggested draft someplace? Well, I, I don't know about that, but I couldn't imagine that there's not. I, I think there is, but I'm, I wouldn't swear to it. But, but they talked about it, about the need to act on it quickly, and, and I think they've certainly got the, the, the main points for it. And I found one. It wasn't NLC, but it's very similar, and I think we could use something like that. Yeah, yeah it's the sentiment doesn't necessarily. Yeah. If we say the right thing, doesn't matter who said it first. It's the message, yeah. 
Okay. All right. Do we have anything further? If not, then okay. yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm uh, just uh, uh, a couple. Of the one I think it was our last meeting, but the committee agreed with something that Scott and I had been advocating: the change in the community improvement district to have uh, initiated by the city council. Uh, the reason I raised that is I read recently about an, uh, a group in the inner city. And I don't know which one it was, but they talked about the failed effort to get a one eight cent tax. Uh, as a CID, because of that petition process, uh, in uh, it, reading it's, that, it's uh, it's on the east side. In, um, it in I, what, I don't think it was a CID. Uh, well, my only point is the CID was, legislation would have made that possible. It would the again we we couldn't get it done because of a petition process. Uh, my only point is that legislation, if we get it enacted, gives us an opportunity to do things we need to get done throughout the city. Okay, I hear you. I think that was a little different. Um, it was a yeah. one a cent sales tax that right. they wanted to raise right. for purposes of was infrastructure it? or something. Right, that came from the Urban Summit, right. but, but they didn't identify where we had the authority yeah. to, to do yeah. an eight that was cent the, sales tax. That was tax. a problem. We just, oh. it, we, but we, a CID could have yeah. could facilitated the newspaper article A CID applied. could have facilitated some of it, yeah. but that, that's not how they didn't go that route. Right. They wanted to do a citywide vote. Right. On an eight cent sales tax, oh, okay. I that would have been that. used in a specific area, right. which would have been a tough sell citywide. Very tough sell. Mm -hmm. right. So, and and they couldn't. They wanted to see if they could get it onto an election ballot or or before us right. via right. petition, and they did not come up with sufficient signatures to do that. That was, I think, what happened. Yes. Okay. But but a CID does offer vehicles for something similar to that, although it's awful tough to do a residential CID. Or yeah, because where are you generating the tax dollars? And you have to have all those signatures. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's all. Our legislation avoid eliminated the signature requirement. Right. That's right. the thing we were trying to accomplish. Right. City Council could do it. <laughs> I'll, I will, I'll wait to talk about that issue on another day. Okay, are we done, Mr. Mayor? Um, anything else? Then we are adjourned.